If you're looking for the K electric guitar for blues hears, a list you must see. Compiling a list of the best blues guitars isn't difficult. You can draft a long list of contenders by simply mousing on over to your record collection and picking out some of the classic albums. If the guitar isn't on the cover with the artist, then sure as sugar it'll be on the back of the sleeve. If you want to get a good quality electric guitar for blues according to your needs, then watch the video till the end and then decide to buy. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Epiphone 1959 Les Paul Standard. A collaboration between the Gibson Custom Shop and Epiphone has sired one of the most candid stars in the Inspired by Gibson series. This take on the holiest of holy grail guitars is quite special indeed and an incredible instrument in its own right. It taps into many of the design features that made the 1959 Gibson Les Paul standard the most sought after electric guitar in history. Here you've got a cornucopia of period inspired specs, chief among them the weight and dimensions. The body is a considerable slab of solid mahogany. Right there you've got the guts of the tone while an AA flame maple cap, beautifully figured considering the list price and finished in VOSS gauge gloss, sprinkles a little high-end fairy dust into the voice. The neck is glued to the body with an old-school long neck tenon, with everything geared towards the acme of Les Paul tone, i.e. warm, thick and creamy, with plenty of clarity and singing sustain. The neck is hand-rolled and is a very comfortable rounded medium C profile. A pair of genuine Gibson USA Burstbucker humbuckers are on hand to nail that PF vibe, and these are connected to the controls with a 50s style wiring loom. It's the little things that add up here, the Switchcraft selector switch and output jack, the CTS pots, and the Mallory capacitors, this limited edition Les Paul is a tone machine, and is testament to Epiphone's hot streak. Moving on to the next at number 2 with Fender Ventura 60s Stratocaster. Fender's Ventura series is all about rifling through the big F scrapbook for design inspiration and then putting together a vintage-inspired instrument that's considerably more affordable than a custom shop or, gasp, an actual 60s model. The Mexican-built series has been a huge success, and guitars such as this 60s Stratocaster are a big reason why. A show of hands at a Strat owner's convention would no doubt tell you that the early 60s Strats were the best of an awesome bunch, and this guitar brings much of that mojo to the table. The Strat single coils are designed by Fender pickup Guru Tim Shaw and our textbook Stratocaster. Strap yourself in for some powerful, treble forward punch at the bridge, funky elasticity in the middle, and that spanky bounce at the neck pickup. The five-way selector switch might not be period accurate, but players such as Hendrix had figured out the workaround for the three ways, and this saves you the hassle. The synchronized tremolo is nice and stable and super expressive. And while the finish options are a little limited, they'd quite possibly make a Fender highlights real. Besides, if none are to your liking, the Ventura Road worn models, a little pricier for all that tender relicking, might be more your pace. Either way, this is quite the strat. The number 3 position is held by Gibson ES-335. The ES-335 is one of the most influential designs in electric guitar. Bridging the gap between the large bodied jazz boxes of yore, the ES-335's solid maple center block made it resistant to feedback and perfect for high volume stages in the company of a band and a loud amplifier. Few guitars, if any, have been copied more than the ES-335 and the Gibson and Epiphone variants alone are enough to make players dizzy as to which one to choose. The well-heeled might wish to open their pocketbooks in the direction of the newly minted Murphy Lab models, forensically aged for that vintage guitar illusion. But the production line models are hard to beat, and you can do the aging at your own pace. Here you ply the body of three-ply maple slash poplar slash maple laminate, and a choice of classic finishes. A pair of calibrated T-type Humbuckers grace the current models and are controlled via hand-wired circuit that features 500k pods and orange drop capacitors. Drawing attention to such miscellanea is not cork sniffing. Such quality components ensure that the two-volume, two-tone setup offers fresh sounds with each turn of the knob. 
The ES-339 recently returned to the lineup, offering a similar vibe to the ES-335, only with a slightly smaller body, but there is something undeniably agreeable about the proportions of the latter. Oh, blue stones. No matter where you park the three-way pickup selector, you'll find something musical and inspiring. Plug it into a deluxe or a similarly charismatic two combo and you'll lose a day. Next at number four, we have Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s P90. We couldn't complete a list of the best blues guitars without one P90 option on the menu. While a junior would be tempting, certainly for the trigger fingered rock and roll players who favor simplicity and lots of it, this 50s gold top with its fat neck. Aspirational build and more easily intonated bridge takes the cake. It's a phenomenal guitar. Of course, some might say that if you're buying a Les Paul, why not get one with humbuckers? They're cool, too, of course, but for us it's hard to beat the tonal majesty of the P90 equipped models. What makes P90s great? They're single coils but wider sounding, more three dimensional, and with a little heat to them. The drawback, of course, is hum. However, if you're playing the blues, you're not likely to have a big muff in the signal chain, and we bet good money that the extra dynamic response, with the P90s cleaning up beautifully as you roll the volume back, is more than worth a little noise. Otherwise, it's business as usual for a 50s Les Paul. Big neck, big tone, lots of singing sustain, and the sense that this is a guitar to grow old with. The number five position is held by Squeer Classic Vibe 50s Telecaster. Produced by Fender's entry-level brand Squeer, this 50s Tele is a blackguard guitar built in the same spirit as the first models to come off the Fender production line in 1951. Here you got a solid slab of pine for the body, with a maple neck bolted onto it. It's so simple, yet it works. Those looking for the sweet, honey warmth of a BB, King Tone should turn their attention elsewhere. Oh, sure. This guitar is all teeth and claws and, of course, twang. It goes without saying that it works gangbusters for country blues, but disciples of Albert Collins, Muddy Waters, and Al Wood also get a lot of fun out of this. Though it's inspired by those 50s designs, this black guard is not beholden to era, with Square choosing a more contemporary nine. 0.5 slash 24 com fingerboard radius as opposed to the more noticeably curved 7.25 slash 18.5 com radius boards found on the originals. This should suit the contemporary player a little more, while those narrow tall frets are a nice compromise between vintage and modern, leaning a little towards the latter in terms of feel. This guitar is ideal for modding, too, and a set of Fender's twisted Telecaster pickups would sound the bee's knees here. The number six position is dominated by Guild Starfire Roman IV. These days, the Starfire Roman IV is built in South Korea, but there is something unmistakably American about the design. Like Epiphone, Guild has been judiciously mining its rich heritage to come out with a number of retro-minded doozies. The Starfire Roman IV is a guitar we'd associate with Buddy Guy. In the 70s, before his love of polka dodge strats became his trademark, Buddy rocked the Starfire Roman IV, so you could argue that this guitar had as big a part to play in shaping the Chicago blues sound as Leo Fender's design. But this isn't a competition. Each guitar has its merits. Here we have a thin line design with a pair of elbow and little bucker humbuckers, and there's an early rock and roll vibe to the tone that translates nicely in blues, with plenty of bite to bring out all the detail in your vibrato. The L bones are certainly a little thicker and warmer than single coils, but they offer a brighter tone than PAF pickups. There are plenty of options in the range, with a Bixby equipped model coming in at around 400 bucks more. If you're looking for an alternative to the Fender slash Gibson paradigm, you can't go wrong with guilt. Moving on to the next at number seven with Gretsch G5400 22TG. We often find ourselves explaining that Gretsch doesn't just make rockabilly guitars, before talking about how the U.S. brand's various semi-hollow electric builds or the cat's pajamas are all things inspired by Eddie Cochrane. But it's true that they're not just rockabilly guitars, and besides, Blue's tone is just a stone's throw from rock and roll. 
We love the G5422TG. This hollow body double cut is a prime example of how Gretsch's of Korean built Electromatic series preserves the brand's heritage, yet is priced for those looking for their first serious guitar. It comes equipped with a pair of Gretsch's black top filter drum humbuckers, though these are quite different from your everyday PAFLX. They put a little more high end sting into your tone, the Panda Gretsch Wang, if you will, and for blues. That makes a quite tantalizing tonal proposition. Dial in a little spring reverb, bounce the selector to the neck pickup, and you'll have a sweet, mellow, and resonant sound to take to the BB box. The four ply body binding, the bound 50s style headstock and neck, and the perloid hump block and lace put the finishing touches on what is one of the most aesthetically pleasing guitars at this or any other price. The number 8 position is held by PRS, McCarty 594 Single Cut. Born too late for blues, but made just right for late night adventures under the lights, playing 5s and 7s with the Buggy Wooji Trio, perhaps this is the McCarty 594 Single Cut's blues origin story. It would be a crime if this guitar were to be overlooked, because in many respects it's a contemporary blues rock Excalibur. If you were building a blues guitar from the ground up right now, it might well look like this. Taking its name from the 24.594, 62.5-acum scale length, the McCarty 594 single cut follows a familiar tonewood recipe, with a generously thick piece of mahogany topped by a similarly generous figured maple cap. This being PRS, a myriad finish options bring out every bit of detail in that glorious maple. The 59 Les Paul standard is clearly the inspiration here, though it's neat to see someone shoot for that tone profile and feel in what is quite a different guitar. There's no mistaking the PRS touches from the open gear phase Roman three locking tuners to the forensic intonation care of the supremely well-engineered bridge and birds inlay on the fingerboard. Blue's guitar comes with a whiff of snobbery, but wrapping the fretting hand around the asymmetrical pattern vintage neck should see that subside in no time. This is a player's guitar. Pricey, but then you often get what you pay for. Again, when compared with the vintage market, the asking price is more than reasonable. The 58-15LT low-turn pickups are super articulate, offering a classic humbucker tone and with some bright single coil tones accessible via the push-pull tone knobs. Next at number 9, we have D'Angelico Deluxe Atlantic. The Deluxe Atlantic is not the first solid body single cut to be influenced by the Les Paul, and it won't be the last, but it might just be one of the most attractively priced and imaginatively spec that we've seen in many a year. Indeed, that body shape owes a little to the Telecaster, too. Just look at the carve opposite the cutaway. It's the guitar of many curves, and while the D'Angelico headstock is a little on the Rococo side, for our blue-collar taste, it's traditional for the New York brand. The Deluxe Atlantic is a diverse beast. Of course, this is a blues guitar buyer's guide, and that's what we are primarily interested in here, but it'll handle rock, jazz, and pop, too. It's just that the Swamp Ash and Maple Top make a lovely tonewood combination for blues, especially with the set of Seymour Duncan Seth Lover Humbuckers on board. You'll have no problem dialing in a Clapton-esque woman tone here, or some biting overdrive for stinging leads. And for those occasions, when you need a bit more clarity and sharpness, there's a cold tap in that control circuit. Wonderful! Stick a pen in the electric guitar's history at 1,972, and you would have all the blues guitars you needed. The form was perfected. The sound was established. In many respects, that shapes our search today, because the best blues guitars are all building upon those very same design fundamentals that were pioneered in the pre-digital era. The challenge for today's builders is to improve upon them. That's all for today. We upload music product review videos in every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the upcoming video notification.